Okay, so uh, finally, the last thing I want to get to is like sort of this uh, potential best of all possible worlds, which is a code that has you know good rate, good minimum distance, and you know let's say a fixed alphabet size such as two, our favorite alphabet size. Okay, so let me expand a little bit on what I mean by good rate and good minimum distance. Because uh, what you really want is um, not just one fixed code with like one fixed value of n, like 300, but you want a family of codes uh, parameterized by n. So for a fixed uh, Q, let's let curly C be a family of codes, Cn, uh, be a sequence of n, k, d, q codes. And I can think about letting k depend on n and d depend on n. Okay, so for example, with the Hamming code, it was n, n minus log base 2, n plus 1, 3, and size 2. And for the Hadamard code, it was n log n, n over 2, size 2. And for the Reed Solomon code, it doesn't really fit into this picture because q is not fixed, but I'll write this anyways. It's n k n minus k plus 1 uh, q. But this is not fixed because this has to be at least n, so it doesn't really count. Um, but one thing we want to look at is called the asymptotic rate. Of this code family, R of C, it's just the limit as n goes to infinity of k over n. K of n over n. K, and strictly speaking, you should put like the limit for something if you're a math nerd, but just let's call it the limit. And also you have the asymptotic relative distance. So relative distance just refers to distance over n, so like the fraction, fractional minimum distance. That's so written delta of c, which is the limit, so n goes to infinity, this minimum distance over n. OK, and these are the two quantities that we want to be large. So you see that like the asymptotic rate of the Hamming code is amazing. It's 1. But the asymptotic minimum distance is horrible. It's 0. And for the Hadamard code, it's the reverse. The asymptotic rate of the Hadamard code is horrible. It's 0. Its asymptotic minimum distance is amazing. It's a half. Okay, So like an absolute constant is amazing. And uh, for the Reed Solomon code, again, it doesn't really count because it has a growing alphabet size, but you can actually make this asymptotic rate, k over n, whatever you want, some r0. And what you'll get is that the uh, asymptotic minimum relative distance is 1 minus r0. OK, so you can make these any two constants that add up to 1, like, for example, a half half. And you know the basic first dream in coding theory, theory of error correcting codes, is what's called uh, asymptotically good code family. They gave such a funny, like, plain name to it—a good code family. And what this means is just uh, you know a family of codes with you know Q fixed. And R of uh, the code being at least some positive constant, and the delta also being at least some positive constant. OK, so just like a code with a uh, rate at least 0.1 and minimum, relative minimum distance at least 0.1. Yeah? And what is R0? Ah, so you can achieve this for any R0. Because right, in the Reed Solomon code, you can actually, there's no fixed dependence between n and k. Like, given any n, you can take whatever k you want. So you can take it to be like r0 times n.
Uh, okay. So, you know, a question that was like open in the like 60s is do these even exist? Can you have a binary code, um, you know, where the rate is a constant, so like when you encode a message of length k, you blow up the length by only a constant factor, and where the minimum, relative minimum distance is a constant, so that like you can correct up to some constant fraction of uh, bit corruptions? And uh, the answer is uh, yes, these things exist. So uh, the first proofs of the fact that these codes exist were merely existential, and they were not like practical at all. So there's something called the uh, Gilbert Barshamov bound. Uh, okay, and this Gilbert Barshamov bound uh, says that for all Q. And for all you know, fixed numbers delta 0 that go up to 1 minus 1 over q, you can think in your head of q to be a, a 2 if you want. There exists a code family, c, with relative minimum distance equal to this delta 0, and rate equal to um, 1 minus the qary entropy of delta 0. Okay, so if, if Q is 2, this is the binary entropy function. Remember that P log 1 over P plus Q log 1 over Q that we saw uh, in the context of combinatorics of the binomial coefficients. And in fact, this number in general is uh, the number such that the number of strings, let's say number of Q array strings in a radius uh, delta zero and Hamming ball is basically Q to the H Q delta zero of lamb, uh, times n. Okay, so it's a generalization of the fact that uh, the volume of a Hamming ball of radius delta n uh, over binary strings is two to the entropy of delta times n. Okay, and Gilbert showed that these code exist by just uh, choosing them by like a greedy argument, just taking uh, code word balls as big as you can. Varshamov showed that a random linear code has these properties, but um, neither of these things is really satisfactory because you want like a code that's actually has efficient encoding and decoding. You don't want just merely that these things exist. Okay, so the last thing I'll say and you can see some more details about this in the, the notes, is that actually efficiently encodable and decodable asymptotically co good codes exist. This was first proved by um, Justison in 1972. And I'll just say it for Q equals 2. Okay, so for binary codes, there exists poly n time encodable and decodable asymptotically good code families. And they have pretty good rate and distance trade-off. So for any rate you want, R0, to have delta, which is something like 0.11 times 1 minus the rate. Okay, so for any constant rate, you can get some constant uh, minimum distance and some constant fraction of errors that you can correct from. Okay, and just one word, what is the idea? You actually take the, to encode uh, something in this juices encode, you take a, uh, a string x, and first you encode it with a Reed solomon code, and that gives you like a long uh, symbol, a string of big symbols of size n. And then you encode each symbol with some binary code. Okay, and this idea of like encoding to get a bunch of symbols and then encoding each symbol by a binary code is called um, code concatenation. Okay, and it's a powerful tool in error correcting code theory. Okay, but this is like a good fact to you know one fact to know about error correcting codes, and um, we'll see some examples of it uh, in the next lecture about derandomization.